What's up everybody, Matt Modai here with Odds Jam here on my solo YouTube channel, Jedi Modai Sports Betting, here to give you a betting preview of the Super Bowl between the Chiefs and the Eagles, obviously. Now my dog is here behind me as well. She's going to help me with this betting preview. Everybody say hi to Jojo. But as I mentioned, I'm just going to give you a betting preview of the Super Bowl. Look at the odds um, from all the major sports books. See where we can find value. I'm also going to dive a little bit deeper into the actual matchups as well, giving you as much analysis as I can of what I think about the game and will give you my official prediction at the end. Now, one thing to start off at the very, very beginning before I share my screen here and look at some of the odds to show you, the biggest thing that I think should be mentioned when talking about this game is just the injury news. Uh, both quarterbacks are kind of banged up at this point. Obviously, Mahomes being the way, way bigger story. Sprained his ankle against the Jags in the divisional round. Came back, won that game, obviously. Came back a week later, put up a pretty incredible performance considering he was clearly still banged up. There's that one point late in the third quarter when he was rolling out to his left. He made a throw, put a lot of weight on that leg, and he was clearly hobbled after that. With that said, number one, he was incredible regardless of how injured he was. Number two, he now has an additional two weeks to recover from that injury. So I am expecting a healthy enough Mahomes that he is going to be close to the peak of his powers. Wanted to get that right off the bat. On the Eagles side, Jalen Hurts missed two games with a shoulder injury, returned in week 18. Very, very vanilla game plan. Came out against the Giants and looked phenomenal. Shoulder looked completely healthy. He was a little bit more shaky against the 49ers a week later. He only passed for like 121 yards in that game. Something very, very uh, small. But the 49ers had their, uh, obviously, both their quarterbacks get injured. The Eagles ended up being able to rely on the run game and didn't need to pass it a ton. When Jalen Hurts did pass, his arm physically looked fine. He just missed a couple throws. He obviously missed A.J. Brown on that. Uh, he was pretty open deep shot, just overthrew him. Did the same thing the week prior against the Giants. But same thing with Mahomes. Hurts getting another two weeks to recover. I am expecting him to be pretty much 100% fine. There are almost no in other injuries on the Eagles side in terms of are we sure they're going to play or not. Now, obviously, Lane Johnson is dealing with that torn groin. He's played through it. He's played phenomenal, total warrior. And the Eagles, and I, this is just fascinating to me, they are going to have all 22 of their week one starters healthy and able to play in this game, assuming something catastrophic doesn't happen in between. That is remarkable health. You almost never see that. Now, the Chiefs, even outside of Mahomes, are dealing with a ton of more injuries. Kelsey was dealing with back spasms. He was questionable to even play against Cincinnati. Now he played. He looked great. I'm expecting a fully 100% Kelsey, not expecting any issues there. The Chiefs were out their top three receiving targets or wide receiver, I should say, specifically in that game against the Bengals. Um, Miko Hardman, he's going to be out for this game almost definitely. Juju Smith-Schuster left with a knee sprain. Reports are that he struggled. He was looking like he was struggling to walk after the game. I am expecting Juju Smith-Schuster to play without really any uh, hesitations. And then Kadarius Toney sprained his ankle as well. I think he's probably going to play. I think he'll probably be hobbled. On the Chiefs' defensive side, the biggest thing is number one cornerback, Legarius Sneed. He left the game uh, against the Bengals with a concussion. Concussions are difficult. Sometimes you can return a week later. Sometimes you can't. I am expecting him to be able to play with that extra week of rest, but that's just something that we're going to have to monitor moving forward, the injuries on the Chiefs side. So I know that was a little bit longer, but I did want to talk about just leading up to the game, what to expect and what injuries to look out for. Now, if I can share my screen a little bit, I'm just looking at Odds Jam. I'm looking at the um, line shopping tool that Odds Jam offers where it pulls lines from every sports book to kind of see where the value is um, across every major sports book for every major market as well. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. So one thing that I've found fascinating about this game is the line first opened up. The, the swings from the spread in this game have been fascinating to me. I know I say fascinating a lot. I'm a total nerd when it comes to this stuff. So 
when the line very, very first opened, the first sports book to post lines was Circa Sportsbook had the Chiefs at two and a half point favorites. That was when the lines first opened almost immediately after the Chiefs won. Within the next hour, the sports books had pretty much universally changed their um, the spread to Eagles minus two and a half. That was about a five point swing from when they first opened to about an hour later. Now, that was on Sunday. As the um, time has come on, it's slightly, slightly, slightly started to favor the Chiefs. Whereas right now, Pinnacle Sportsbook, who I kind of use to um, set the market as kind of like a way, okay, this is the sharpest sportsbook, and we're going to use them to set the market. And when, sorry, when, to go back, when I say favor the Chiefs, I mean money, more money is starting to come in on the Chiefs. The Eagles are still the favorite, but they're not as big of a favorite. So I did want to mention that part. The Chiefs are down to plus 104. At one point, they are at like plus 115. The Eagles are down to minus 115. At one point, they are up to like minus 135. So money is starting to come in on the Chiefs. When looking at the spread, it's pretty much between minus one, Eagles minus one to Eagles minus one and a half. Uh, Sharp Sportsbooks, Pinnacle has them at minus one. Bet Online has them at minus one and a half, or minus one as well. Bet Online being another Sharp Sportsbook. And then Bookmaker has them at minus one and a half. Now it does look like both Bet Online and Bookmaker favor the Eagles a little bit more than Pinnacle does. They're both they're all three really sharp. The average is somewhere around Eagles minus 120, minus 121, something like that. But all of the regulated sports books have them, they haven't really updated their lines a ton, pretty much universally at minus 125. And that's been stagnant since the week first opened on Monday after that initial swing. Looking at the total is kind of interesting. Um, when I checked this yesterday, the total was universally at 48 and a half. Now I told you. I thought that was going to move up. I thought the total was going to increase just based on the live the line movement. And that's exactly what's happened. So right off the bat, my my favorite bet right now is to take the over 49 and a half at minus 108 odds at win bet. I think that is a really, really good price. Number one, it's positive expected value. If you click this little button here to show the no VIG odds, it does exactly what it sounds like. It removes the VIG removes the VIG from Pinnacle, which sees that they have it priced at minus 109. And if and that's the no VIG line. That's the true line that Pinnacle offers. And as you can see, WinBet has it at minus 108, which is better odds than minus 109, showing you some value. I also like the over 49 and a half because both BetOnline and Bookmaker have this total at 50. Yet before, they had it at 49 and a half. Money is coming in on the over. Now they're at 50. So I really, really like this over 49 and a half. That's my favorite bet as of right now that I'm going to go ahead and lock in. So I have it pulled up here. I'm going to put a unit on this one. That's kind of my standard measurement is one unit. Uh, so let me go ahead and lock this in. Perfect. So that is right now my favorite bet just from initial line shopping. So to get back to the matchups and stuff, the reason why I like the over, I think both of these teams are going to score in the high 20s. I really, really do. The Eagles team total, when I got it, was at 24 and a half. I love that over. The Chiefs team total was at 23 and a half. I love that over. I took both teams team total as well. Now, there's obviously a ton to get into. I'm going to start with the Eagles offense against the Chiefs defense. Now, obviously, as you can tell by all my attire, I am an Eagles fan. I'm not going to hide behind that, but I'm just going to give my analysis based on how, how I think the game is going to go. I'm going to be as unbiased as possible. To me, the biggest advantage in this game is the Eagles defense offensive line, excuse me, versus the Chiefs defensive line. Now, Chris Jones, monster. Frank Clark, I'm not going to quite say monster, really, really good. They're more penetrating, pass rushing um, types of defensive uh, defensive linemen than they are run stoppers. Now, Chris Jones is amazing at everything, but he's primarily a pass rusher. And it makes sense when you think about the Chiefs, right? That you have your offense with Patrick Mahomes. You're almost always playing with the lead. So you know what you should do? Just load up on pass rushers. It makes a ton of sense. And I will say the Chiefs defense has played really, really well in both playoff games. They held Cincinnati to 20 points. They sacked Burrow a ton. The week prior when Mahomes was figuring out his ankle issue, it was the Chiefs defense that won them that game. But the Eagles offensive line is just a different animal. They dominated the Giants in their first game with Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence is as close to Chris Jones 
as it gets. He's a little bit bigger, not as good of a pass rusher as Chris Jones, not as good of a player overall, but Dexter Lawrence is a monster in the def- in a, a, as a defensive tackle. The week later, the Eagles ran for like over 250 yards against the Giants. A week later, against the number one rush defense in the entire NFL, the Eagles dominated the 49ers front as well. Now, there was a little bit of a lull uh, in the, kind of the end of the first into the second quarter where the Eagles offense had three drives where they only got one first down. And um, players after the game said it was the biggest chess match that they can remember, literally drive to drive. But if you look at all of um, the analysis that came from that slow point, the Eagles made a ton of really smart adjustments to their offensive line, and they ran the ball incredibly well pretty much after that point. Now, obviously, the Eagles were aided by the 49ers injury at quarterback situation. I can assure you, Mahomes is not going to score seven points on the other side, and we'll get to that. But to me, I think the Eagles are going to be able to control the line of scrimmage on offense, and I think they're going to have a ton of success running the ball. Now, the Chiefs did a pretty good job against the Bengals rushing attack, but it's just a different animal. By every metric you look at, the Eagles have the best offensive line in the entire NFL. By far, by any metric you look at, pass blocking, run blocking, success rate, EPA per play, however you want to slice it, the Eagles have the best offensive line. And that to me is the biggest advantage. So I think the Eagles are going to put up points, easily going to put up points. The Chiefs linebackers played well against Cincinnati. They're still a weak point. They're average at best. And if you look at what the Eagles did to the Giants linebackers in the divisional round, I think they could do something similar. Again, I don't think the Eagles are going to put up 38 points, but I think they could easily put up 28, 31, something like that. On the other side of the ball, the Chiefs versus the um, Chiefs offense versus the Eagles defense. Now, last year, these two teams played. The Chiefs didn't punt. They put up 40 points, didn't punt the entire game. Pat Mahomes had like five touchdowns. He had like five incompletions. Tyreek Hill had almost 200 yards and three touchdowns. A lot has changed since that game. Number one, a, the Eagles defensive coordinator, A, is he's simply better himself. He's calling games better. And the Eagles have a better roster. They have a better pass rush, better secondary, better. Everything about their defense is better. So the only chance the Eagles have at slowing, I'm not going to say stop, slowing down the Chiefs is if their pass rush can dominate the way they have the past two games. Now, the Chiefs' offensive line is good. I would put it probably on par with the 49ers. And the Eagles just absolutely demolished the 49ers offensive line. Just totally smoked them. The literal first drive of the game. Sack fumble, Purdy gets hurt, pretty much game over. So the Eagles do have, I will say they have the advantage. Eagles defensive line has the advantage over the Chiefs offensive line. But if you're just looking at what's the biggest advantage in the entire game as a whole, it's Patrick Mahomes, without a doubt. I don't care if the Eagles... um, or if the Chiefs wide receivers are banged up or not. Pat Mahomes, he's just a total matchup nightmare. And he knows where to go with the ball. He can put the ball anywhere. And the Eagles are weak, at the weakest, I should say, in the middle of the field. That first drive before Brock Purdy got hurt, granted this was like three plays, they were clearly attacking the Eagles in the middle of the field. I think they got two first downs in a row, either two straight plays or they definitely got two first downs before Purdy got hurt. And I think that's where the Chiefs are going to have the advantage, obviously with Travis Kelsey. You can double, triple, quadruple team him. He just has a mind meld with Mahomes, Kelsey and Mahomes do. Look no further than that touchdown they had um, against the Bengals. He was supposed to run a corner route. He realized that the defense defense was shading him towards that. He cut towards the middle, wide open touchdown. There's just no defense that you can do against that. So I think the Chiefs are going to have success on offense as well. The only hope for the Eagles is if that if they can get a turnover or two. When I'm looking at handicapping this game, A, I already mentioned, I like the over a ton. I think both teams are going to score in the high 20s, if not 30s. Um, looking at who I think is going to win straight up, I'll be honest, I really, really struggle. At the beginning of the week, I got a really good price on the Eagles' money line. I got them at like minus 112. It's been bet up all the way in the minus 120s, but now more money is coming in on the Chiefs. But... To give my official prediction, I'm giving you the over. I am going to take the Eagles minus one or minus one and a half, depending on where you can get it. Not because I'm being a homer, but because I think the Eagles have more answers on offense than any team has had in a while. 
you know, they their first drive, they had a uh, n- uh, against the 49ers, number one defense in the entire NFL. Really good third down conversion to A.J. Brown. Really good fourth down conversion to Devontae Smith. Now, it ended up Devontae Smith, that should that should not have been ruled a catch. Kyle Shanahan's a coward and um, and did not challenge it. So that's his fault. Then they kind of stagnated a little bit. And then they just said, you know what? We're just going to lean on the run game. And the Eagles run game dominated the 49ers run defense. And again, the Chiefs, by every statistical measure, are average or below average of defending the run. So I think the Eagles, they could have success passing. They can have success running. And there's just no answer for the Eagles offense. Now, obviously, you could say the same about Patrick Mahomes. I think personally, the Eagles are going to be able to get enough pressure on Pat Mahomes to either force him into a mistake, like a fumble, an interception, some turnover that can swing the game, or they're going to be able to get enough stops. And by enough stops, I mean like they could force the Chiefs into three punts. I think the Eagles win, and I think they have a good enough defensive line in secondary to be able to do that. So I already have the Eagles money line. I took them. I really, really like the over as well, and that's my official prediction and betting preview for the game. So if you are tailing any of these bets, the over or the Eagles, comment and let me know. Other than that, let me know what you thought of the analysis. Was it too long? Was it too much rambling? Anything that you can give me to help me out as I um, move forward with these videos on my own channel, please let me know. And while you're there, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, like, definitely subscribe as I try to build this. All that stuff would help me out a ton. But that's all I got. So I appreciate you guys joining me and JoJo for my um, betting preview on my own channel. Thanks for watching and have a good one.